you think you look like Mark Zuckerberg, try dressing up as an alien next time. Anyway, good morning. <laughs> you know, I'm seriously running the risk of being added to Zuckerberg's hit list here. Or I may even get my channel demonetized simply for mentioning his name. Anyway, I need to go and have a stark discussion with a high pressure fuel pump. Excuse me. <laughs> Safety first. Okay, she bitch, you're becoming really annoying. And at the end of this video, you're going somewhere you're not gonna like. The gulag. Okay, everybody, in case you haven't got a clue what the heck I'm talking about, I made a video you can watch here. It's a 2016 Mark V Mondeo 2 litre diesel. Some of the teeth got stripped off the camshaft drive belt, resulting in 16 broken valve rockers in the engine. I've subsequently rebuilt the engine, the car's running as sweet as a nut, and it's left the garage. In the back of my mind all this time, I'm thinking, why have the teeth stripped off this belt? Because we've got a lot of these Mondeos here for a number of years now, and this is the first time this has ever happened. So it's a bit of an odd one. I want to say thank you to everybody who left comments on that video, because a couple of the comments have kind of really made me think. One guy in particular has said, guess what? The pump timing's your problem. I've worn that t-shirt, I've been there, that's why the teeth are stripped off your cam belt. So I thought, okay, maybe this is worth looking into. I know some of these high pressure pumps, you don't tie them up, and I believe the case with this particular pump. Whereas I do know some high pressure fuel pumps, you do tie them up, there's marks on them to line up. So I looked into it. I've got the Ford Etis system up, and I'm gonna show you how the cam belt lines up. And there's actually a pin to line the pump up, even though it's on the back end of the camshaft. I've also done some digging on the internet and I found a few paragraphs which kind of sum up this situation and explain why this has happened. And it's all kind of making sense now. So what I'll do to start with, I'll read you these paragraphs I found on the internet just to give you some kind of idea how this has happened and if you've got one of these pumps removed from these Mark 5 engines, these two litre diesel engines, you need to put the pump back on right. So I'll read through this. There are a couple of theories put out by OEMs of the pumps as to why they are timed. Either argument that follows is valid. A. The timing of the pumping elements to the start of injection occurrences is important if pressure waves are considered and therefore accurate pump timing will lead to good rail pressure control on the control valve. Accurate averaging of the pressure at the rail feedback sensor and accurate pressure at each injector all of which are needed for accurate emissions, but not necessarily to get an engine up and running. Now I think the next one, which is B, is going to apply to me more. The timing of the pump elements also aligns the peak torque angles on the pump pulley with known torsional vibrations on the drive belt and cam drive systems. Again, giving a smoother drive into the pumping elements at the, pressure, at the precise timing angles that they need to deliver reliable pressures into the rail. This leads onto rail pressure control being stable and, ac and accurate. But even more importantly, the torsional vibrations into any belt or chain drive system between common rail pumps and crankshaft are timed so as not to prematurely fail the drive system snapped belts, whipping chains, etc. So going by that theory, if your high pressure fuel pump is not aligned up properly, it's out of balance and it can potentially damage your camshaft drive belt. Take it as you will. Now this particular high pressure fuel pump here is held on by three bolts. Although the two bottom ones have got slots in them, there is no adjustment on this pump because the top stud will hold it solid. So once this goes onto its studs, you can't move it. It goes on in one position only. Now timing this pump up is pretty straightforward. On the cog, you've got one little dot just here. And you turn that around till it lines up with a hole in the casing just there. And that's it. 
that's your pump timed up. So once you've lined up the two dots on this pump, this whole pump unit will dog into a separate housing with another cog in it. At the back of that housing there is a dog drive, which slots into the rear of your exhaust camshaft. So on this Ford Etis system, you can see that when the camshaft belt is lined up, there is a pin to set the camshaft sprocket. There's also another timing pin, which is for your high pressure fuel pump, which goes through the camshaft as well. I can't quite understand why that's there when this mains pin here is holding this sprocket solid anyway. But if you notice at the rear of the camshaft, there's just two slots. So you could potentially get the pump in with the camshaft 180 degrees out. Whether that would make any difference or not, I do not know. But what I'm saying is it's best to actually pin your camshaft sprocket up as it's shown in this illustration before you refit your pump. Then you know it's going to be refitted in the proper position. You see, all I've really got to go on here is pictures. There's no actual description explaining anything. It might just be the case that both them timing pins are not fitted at the same time. It may be if you've just got the pump removed from the engine, you only use the pump timing pin hole around about the six o'clock position to time that camshaft sprocket up. I will find out for definite when I change the next cam belt because I'll try. And just to show you, you've got your little eye there showing the two dots lined up on this pump. So, now knowing all this new information, what a revelation. <laughs> the car I've just rebuilt is back out on the road. I know that the cam belt timing is all timed up perfectly, but I just put the pump back onto the back of the camshaft like, yeah, that's fine. So no doubt the pump timing is miles out still, even though it's not affecting the running of the car whatsoever. And this is the thing, when you start reading up on the internet, you've got people saying, well, we have these pumps all the time and we've never had any ill effects whatsoever. But I have, and I'm thinking to myself, I really need to correct this. So the next time this car comes in for service, I've made a note of it, I shall remove the pump and I shall line that pump up as it should be so this doesn't happen again. At least I can say I've done it right and fair enough, this is not something that's going to happen in a few, in a few miles. This, this has been a process of, I mean, it's taken probably about 80,000 miles for this to happen with a pump out of timing. And the particular car that all the rockers broke on, I look back in the records and at just over 100,000 miles, when the last cam belts were done, the pump had been removed from that engine by me or somebody else and the oil seal was replaced on it. So that's why the pump was obviously just put back in with the, uh, the tooth gear in the wrong position. And that's why it's happened. So yeah, it's a piece of information that's now worth knowing, especially if you're a kind of do-it-yourself Mark V Mondeo owner. E even garages, you know, you could take your Mark V to a garage and, and have, have this kind of job done, and they might not even know this information. I certainly didn't know. Well, I do now, and this won't be happening again, but now this information's here on the internet, so whoever watches it, if you have to come across this particular type of job where you've got to remove one of them high pressure fuel pumps, you can at least put it back in the right position now. Oh, and another thing, rather than blame myself for not looking up the information I should have known in the first place and doing the job correctly, I'm going to put the pump in the gulag anyway. <laughs> gulag time! Yeah! And that fuel pump I've just flung in the gulag it is faulty, it wasn't a good one, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't have flung it in there in the first place. But yeah, it's definitely faulty. And if you want to know why it's faulty, you can watch that one here. So till the next time, see ya.